Hi, this is Protect Yourself Against the Bees. This is my bee deck. It's a bee on a deck. Um, yes. Hi. I'm a thought leader. This was uh, tweeted at the Hacker Chicks event, and it keeps on retweeting, and I can't actually use my Twitter anymore because it keeps on retweeting. Um, and I was also the first person to use the hashtag, so if you need to contact me, I'm at katie at thoughtleader.guru. Um, <laughs> Real address, but I'm more often at self-deprecating. <laughs> but I'm actually Katie at Glazen.com. I'm Glazen on all the places, on Twitter, Instagram, and GitHub. And if you follow me on Instagram, you get lots and lots and lots of pictures of bees. So many bees. Bees in flowers, lots of flowers, lots of bees. Even fuzzy ones from Wellington. This was taken near the windmills up the way. Um, but I like these kind of bees, but I also like these kind of bees. This is a bee. This is an emoji bee. My slides aren't updating over here. One moment. There you go. OK. Stop that. Right. This is an emoji bee. Emoji, you may be familiar with it. Um, Puatahana is the Maori word for it. Kiora, by the way. My slides didn't have the translations up here, sorry. Um, anyway, this is a bee. You may recognize it. You may not recognize it, because depending on what platform you're using, your emoji bees look different. If you're on iOS, it'll look like the first one. If you're on Android, in the middle. And if you're on Windows, it'll look like the one on the end. It all depends what platform you're running. Now, a lot of the bees are standardized, which is great. Standard bees for everyone. They all look the same. They've all got two wings. Sometimes they have legs, they have a stinger. It's great. Then it gets a bit confusing. So you've got the iOS bee, standard bee. Yeah, bit of a cartoon. Yeah, 7 out of 10. Then you've got this bee, which is just cute as heck. This is from Emoji One, which is a Kickstarter, open source, open license emoji set. But they keep on updating their bee. So depending on which version you have, you have a different bee. Um, I like 2.0. It's kind of fuzzy. Um, this is the Android bee. This is my favorite bee. 10 out of 10. Keep buzzing, my little friend. Um, sadly, this bee um, has been superseded by this bee. Uh, this is the Android Oreo bee. Um, it's an exorcist bee because I've never seen any bee where the eyes and the wings. <laughs> Good luck getting that one out of your head. Um, this is the LG bee. If you have an LG phone, they supersede your emoji for you. Um, this bee, it's like the bee movie, but every time you see the bee, you keep on being reminded that the bee movie exists. And this is from Samsung, so every time you see this bee, um, you need to make sure you're not using a Galaxy Note, because they explode. <laughs> and of course, you have your wonderful, successful Red Teamer bee with its honeypot. He's playing Quidditch, I don't know. Anyway, um, for these and more emoji takes, follow me on uh, twitter.com slash emoji rates. It's like dog rates, but for emoji. Anyway, back to the bees. When I'm not taking pictures or grading bees, I do conference talks. I've been traveling around just a little bit doing a talk called The Power and Responsibility of Unicode Adoption, which sounds completely super technical, but it's basically just me ranting about emoji and not just the bee emoji. It's great. You should go see it. Uh, thing is, that's not my talk title. This is my talk title. The Power, Bolt, and Responsibility, Scold Sweat, of Unicode Adoption, Sparkles, which makes it really fun when you try to put this as your talk title through every kind of conference software you can imagine. First time I got accepted, I got an acceptance email. Congratulations, we have chosen your talk. Select a talk, the power, lightning bolt, and responsibility. Where's the rest of my talk title? Oh, it doesn't stop there. Some places won't even let me submit it because it says that, oh, we can't handle four byte characters. So we're just going to like drop your talk content. So I can't even like put my proper talk title up. Um, but then the lovely crew at KiwiCon. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sadly, it didn't get accepted last year at KiwiCon, but it got accepted here, besides Wellington, accepting what KiwiCon rejects. <laughs> It's what makes it the best. 
Sorry, that's a tuna pun. I should keep to the bee puns. Anyway, um, <laughs> some conferences get it right. I get inline emoji, and it works fine, except when they try to print it out, and then it just drops. <laughs> Um, or sometimes when you have, say, the lovely AV people that get printouts, um, it prints out that. And for this particular talk, I was introduced on stage as the power box box and responsibility box of Unicode Adoption Box. That was fun. But some wonderful conferences actually add a B for me, because my talk title was supposed to be Protect Yourself from the B, B Emoji. Get to the sides. Thank you. Um, the amount of effort that B-Sides put in to actually put a B there was great because it's like, oh, I'm doing the talk about the B. It's marked as a B on your schedule. Here's some I prepared earlier. Um, other times it just works as well, like I've had wonderful uh, inline thinking emoji in my talk, uh, but this uh, particular character wasn't standardized until 2016, so I've had printouts in communications that look like that, which has been fun. But mostly they just tend to drop it out entirely. Um, this was a printout put on a wall. So I put emoji stickers on it and fixed it. <laughs> but what's really great is when you get the digital boards. Because this is how my talk came up. You may notice something a bit weird. That. That is a legit emoji. That is the Windows 8.0 representation of that emoji, which means I know that at the Mumble Mumble Convention Center in Mumble Mumble City, I know that they're running Windows 8.0 and have not upgraded to 8.1. So you know exactly what operating system they're running, and then you can get your mad zero days from there. So that's fun. Uh, and I don't just do this, like, I don't just travel the world giving talks about emoji just to try to pop conference software. I can just tweet people that decide to leave their internet on in the middle of their talk. Pop-ups, hi. From this, we can tell that this wonderful person is uh, running Windows 10. But, you know, there's still, like, the actual thing there. You can tell it's Windows, but because of the color, you can tell it's Windows 10. Um, and it's not just conference slides. I also do it when I order coffee. There's a little tiny bee there. Um, and when I'm not ordering coffee, I just order the food that looks like emoji anyway. <laughs> This is delicious, by the way. This is from Sweet Release, friends of KiwiCon and B-Sides. It's amazing. Um, but if you can't find uh, emoji uh, fake vegan pork dumplings, uh, you can always just get a bee sting. Anyway, back to the bees. <laughs> so this is a hacker conf, yeah? We know bees are awesome, but can we use bees to hack things? Well, if you have a whole lot of time and some super glue and little tiny microprocessors, you could attach the little tiny microprocessors to the back of bees, like they did in Manchester. So they have these little tiny microchips on the back of bees, and they can track where they go and see the migrating patterns of bees and work out why all the bees are disappearing. Maybe it's because people keep on attaching microchips to them, and they get really upset. <laughs> but this is fiddly, um, also known as the Internet of Stings, by the way. <laughs> we should stick to our emoji. But what is emoji? Emoji is used to describe any sort of picture character, but it's not. Emoji is a specific thing. These are not emoji. These are terrible, terrible things that should not exist. They're normally animated, and they make me cry when I hear these called emoji. These are also not emoji. These are Facebook stickers. I have 20 minutes. All right, then you have 10. Thank you. Anyway, these are not emoji. These were cool back when Yahoo Messenger was a thing 15 years ago, when you could get the original Shrek uh, stickers in your messenger and annoy people because bandwidth is horrible. Um, this is not an emoji. This is an animoji. This is facial recognition tracking as a gimmick, trying to make it popular, and also trying to get you to buy the iPhone X or 10 or whatever they want to call it now. This is a perversion of the stuff that sort of takes away your privacy. Uh, but, you know, cute anthropomorphic fox. Um, these are not emoji either. These are stickers. You can use these stickers in Twitter. These, these are emoji. Duck is an official emoji, owl is an official emoji. However, the implementation here is putting stickers onto emoji, which means that you can do things like um, anonymize particular screenshots in your presentation. Except, do not do this to anonymize your information with Twitter stickers, because the original image will be uploaded to Twitter. Please don't do this. Anyway, native emoji can also break your phone, which is great. Uh, this is the pride flag. This is a legit emoji Unicode uh, glumpy glump. 
Go on, pick one. It is comprised of two existing emoji characters and then a zero with joiner in the middle. So when it reads it all together in a system that's been specifically updated to understand this set, it will change into the pride flag. Except if you were to say put white flag, zero, rainbow, uh, you could crash your phone. They've since fixed this. Um, there's been a whole lot of Unicode bugs in iPhone, including the uh, effective power bug. That wasn't me. That's a bug. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, the effective power thing has a whole bunch of Arabic text, and when it pops up in a notification, the notification's automatically truncated, except if you're familiar with Arabic text, the more you add, the shorter it gets, so it tries to truncate it, it goes too long, it tries to truncate again, and it, the phone reboots. Um, there was also this really interesting bug where you tried to type I, and it came up as that. So that's fun. On the web, it's even greater. You know where emoji has to work? URLs. It has to. This is a real URL. Spoonemoji.ws. There is an entire RFC dedicated to... Uh, I swear that's not me. I'm not going to move anymore. Okay. There is an entire RFC dedicated to describing how to convert that emoji into Punicode to be able to use just Latin characters to be able to describe the URL. Um, you can also use emoji in your query strings, but you cannot use emoji in specific places otherwise, and we'll get to that because, haha, not only can you use emoji, you can also use extended characters, you can also use your right to left. So you can get wonderful URLs like this, where depending on the browser, it'll flip it around and it'll look like that, and then it looks like it's encrypted, but it's actually that. So, yeah, that's been fixed now, which is great. Um, also, another thing in Safari, which is really interesting, you cannot use the lock emoji in your tab bar because it would make it look like, say, your site was secure. So that's cool. Um, also, you can uh, pop shells with emoji. Well, you can power shell with emoji. Uh, <laughs> this has been recently going around Twitter as the sunset protocol. Sunset. So you can make some really sick obfuscation. And then you can make it so you can't actually see the fact that you're calling PowerShell from your things. And it's cool, because it's like, hey, look, I got PowerShell. It's like shell, but powerful. Anyway, but you can't use emoji in PowerShell, which is sad. But the best thing, this is the biggest thing that I've ever seen happening where emoji could have broken the entire internet. Who here has heard of WordPress? WordPress runs a lot of the internet. Who here has heard of MySQL? Who here runs MySQL? Who here makes sure that they have strict all tables set? Great. If you don't, this next bit's for you. Let's get back to our B. Actually, this B. This B has a particular code point. This is our code point. This is four bytes. There is a particular issue when you do not have strict tables enabled and you use UTF-8 in MySQL. If you used UTF-8 MB4, you're fine. If you use UTF-8, assuming it would be actually UTF-8 compliant, it's not. And you get fun stuff like this. If I'm on a WordPress blog and with my malicious black hat on, I could type in something like this. This just turns up like, oh, B-Sides Wellington is awesome, except I have a B in there. If you have a WordPress version lower than 4.2, I believe, and you have MySQL, and you do not have strict tables, and you have UTF-8, it will drop your input at the B, which means you could then put in another comment, which is the rest of your injection script, because the angle bracket script is stopped client-side. But you don't need the starting bracket. You've got that in your previous comment. So as soon as you load the page again, you have the first bit, and then your quote with no ending double quote, and then you have the rest of your script. And then your site explodes because you've got cross-site scripting attacks, all because of that little b. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> this is a particular CV that documents all this. Uh, this is all patched as of WordPress 4.2, so please patch all your things. If you upgrade your WordPress past 4.2, you get emoji. And, you know, you get rid of terrible CV vulnerabilities, but you get emoji. This was all put
pushed is like, we now natively support emoji and no longer cross-site scripts your site. We natively support emoji now. This is why you should update all your systems because you get cool new emoji. So yes, MySQL, strict tables, UTF-8, MB4 would be great because otherwise bad things happen. And a really important note, really important, who here has updated their iPhone in the last week? Please, please do, because your B changes to something that doesn't look terrible anymore. It actually looks really freaking cute. So please update your iPhones, and you get cool new emoji. 